Oh, that's right. I just pulled that back. Take that off me. We're going to share that time. Is uh, called Cleaning Up the Air Out There by Michelle Hoffman. I'm going to give you a little bit of their uh, brief bios here for these two uh, ladies who are about to speak. Stacy Adams, who is to my right, is an environmental planning consultant for the Utah Department of Environmental Quality and is focused on providing public outreach and environmental education to the residents of Utah. Her background includes serving the residents of Salt Lake County as the citizen advocate and community relations specialist for Mayor Peter Caroon's office. Stacy has an educational background in political science and psychology and is currently in her first year of the Executive Masters of Public Administration program at the University of Utah. Then I will, uh, then uh, in a, about 10, 20 minutes, yeah. I'll uh, introduce uh, our next speaker. Thank you very much, Stacy. Thanks, Jim. So if I seem crazy, you'll know why. Uh, school and a full-time job are certainly taking, they're extracting their, um, I guess, their debt from my sanity. So I'm wondering if anyone in the audience would mind timing me. I like to be a stickler for myself, and I'm hoping perhaps to shave a few minutes off. So Kent, or, OK, would you just flag me at 10? 10 minutes, OK. And I, I may skip a couple of my slides, but I'm sure that that's probably uh, for your benefit. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the air quality message. And the two things that I hope you'll take away uh, from my talk today are the fact that the low-hanging fruit has been picked in terms of air quality. We are up against uh, some very serious needs when it comes to finding solutions for air quality. The easy things have been done. And the second thing I'd like you to know is that you as individuals have one of the most important roles and one of the most important solutions in terms of improving the air quality situation. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about how we encourage people to take action and to change some of their behaviors to improve air quality. Uh, we do that through messaging. And we've had some really interesting successes and some really interesting, not quite successes, but not really failures in terms of the air quality message. Um, a couple of the ways we message are providing technical information. For instance, this slide, parking your vehicle for one day keeps a quarter pound of pollution out of the air. Some people really need facts to motivate them. They really want information. They really want to be able to relate a specific action to a specific amount of improvement. We keep things simple, like park it, walk it. Um, we're not exactly telling the story about why it's important, but we are encouraging action. And we also provide some health messages. Um, when we do provide health messages, we try to do so in a way that doesn't frighten people or scare them. Uh, we try to provide facts in a neutral manner so that people can get the information they need without taking any sort of bias one way or the other um, from the information. So we hope to have a more informed public when we do this. We want them to carry our message out into different groups of people. Um, the most important thing is that we want them to be able to achieve small steps that lead to long-term change. And we found that the, if people take small steps over time, in the long run they end up making more of a difference um, as opposed to just doing everything they can right off the bat and getting overwhelmed and getting exhausted by trying to change so many behaviors at once. Okay, so we're finding that our messages work with folks like you. We would probably refer to most of you as the choir. You're people who are already plugged into this issue. You already have some level of knowledge about the air quality problem. And for the most part, you're probably already doing things to help improve air quality. Um, unfortunately, what we're finding is that the messages we've developed so far do not travel out beyond our group. We have a very difficult time finding ways to motivate people who might not think that air quality is a problem, who might not think that they contribute to the problem, or who just, it, it just might not be a priority for them. So we've done a couple of things. We've done a really great job with the things that we're good at. We've recognized that we have some challenges, and as a result, we also have some very interesting opportunities to do things that we haven't done before. We are very passionate about the causes we care about. Uh, the people that I know in this room can be applauded for doing many, many great things for elevating the issue getting great media coverage, being willing to walk the talk, for taking responsibility for the things that you advocate that other people take responsibility for as well. And um, for those of you that are doing that, I just 
would like to recognize that. I think you're all doing a tremendous job, so thank you from me. But we are also struggling with some things, and that is that we can't really, or we haven't really found a way to communicate with people who might not speak our language coming from an environmental, a regulatory, or an advocacy type of background. Um, sometimes we have a difficult time taking ourselves out of messaging development. We know what makes sense to us, we know what motivates us, but what we don't know is what would motivate other people. And um, I think that we all have different life circumstances and values too that shape our decisions and it may be difficult for us to understand what those are when we get outside of the circle that we're used to traveling in. So our opportunities, we want to learn about our audience, we need to find out what motivates them, what kind of obstacles they face, and how uh, they see themselves. This is a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, the point of this slide is really just to say that most of us probably feel like everybody should know better, and if they know better, why aren't they doing anything? And they may see themselves a little bit differently. Um, people don't really like to be criticized for the lifestyles that they lead. They don't like to be blamed, and what I've learned is that guilt is like earmuffs. The minute you try to make people feel guilty, they stop hearing anything that you have to say. And so they may wonder why they're being criticized for driving their kids to school or soccer practice, or why they're being criticized for having a family evening at home using the fireplace, or why aren't we regulating industry more, or quite frankly, why are we telling them what to do? So, just a couple of things I'd like for you all to keep in mind as we go forward. Um, we're a partnership, whether we all work together directly or indirectly, if you care about this issue, then you're part of a much broader coalition of people who are working, uh, working from the government, working from nonprofits, working from other community organizations to try to solve this. And so what we need to do is find a way to get our message across to people in a way that makes sense to them and that matters to them. So talk to people, find out what motivates them. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that everyone has a role to play, no matter how big or how small. Um, doing anything is better than doing nothing at all. And so if you run into people who may feel overwhelmed by the message, and I know I'm certainly one of those people that cannot change everything at once, give me something in a small chunk. Give them anything to do. Encourage them to carpool. Tell them to trip chain. Tell them to walk the next time they have to go to the gas station that's nearest to their home. And even if they only do one thing one time, they have done something and it matters. And they're probably going to be open to receiving more messages like that in the future. So uh, please encourage people, don't discourage people, and let them know that incremental change matters. Anything they do is important. In terms of getting the message out, several years ago we found that people were getting frustrated by being told what to do. Well, you can't drive anymore, or you have to take public transportation, or you have to do this, 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 or this. And there were just kind of too many things, and there were a lot of big things. So what we tried to do was give people a goal, and that is earn 10 points, and if you'll see up on the monitors, we created this bookmark, and I have some up here and outside. But we wanted everyone to get to 10 points each day, no matter how they got there. The most important thing you can do is obviously to leave your car at home, but there are other things that you can do. You can carpool, you can trip chain, you can take your lunch, you can walk to lunch. And so we gave people a target to try to hit, and we broke up the actions and the strategies they could use into manageable pieces so that they could pick things that were realistic for them that they could achieve. And once again, just hearkening back, the low-hanging fruit has been picked. Um, if we love to say if it was easy, it would have been fixed already. And you can see from the complex process of the SIP that Catherine presented, that we have a lot of hard work ahead of us. And if there were other things we could do that were easier, I guarantee you we would be focusing on those first, but they have been done at this point. And again, guilt is like earmuffs. Um, people do things for their own reasons, not for our own. We don't get to vote on people's choices. They get to make those decisions themselves. And the most important thing that we can do is offer people a choice of solutions, not blame them, not try to make them feel guilty, and not try to force our language or our ideas um, on them when we're trying to encourage them to take healthy behavior change. So I was looking through my presentation, and I hope I haven't been speaking too fast, because I often do that when I have to address people. But I came across a slide, and it really reminded me of several people in the room who've just done some really tremendous things when it comes to working on this issue. And it's a great quote by Anne Frank, that nobody needs to wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. So I hope that each of you will take that away. On your way home today, um, go to speed limit. I know as you constantly absolutely hate to do that, but it helps improve air quality. 
check your tire pressure, make sure your tires are properly inflated. If you have to run errands later or this weekend, run them all at the same time so that your trip chain, carpool, take a walk with your family, do anything you can to make a difference and encourage the people that you know to do anything they can as well. And um, some of you may have some ideas about mes messaging. You may come from audiences that, um, that may be entirely new to this issue or to um, some of the things we're talking about here today. And I'd love to hear from you to get your ideas. They're, it's very important to me as a, I guess, an outreach educator that I don't just keep saying the same things to the same people. We'd like to make this count. And your help is what we're going to need to do that. So that's, that's it. I, I feel pleased that you didn't raise your hand yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, is your office also not only directing messages to Utah in general, but are you directing messages about how we see here and the necessity for doing it to our legislators and to our government officials? Yes. As well. We do work with legislatures one on one. Um, Michelle's going to get up here and talk in a moment about a lot of the different collaborative partnerships that are going on, and that's one of the most important ways that we actually get the message out is by working with other groups, working with other cities and elected officials. And a follow-up question, uh, not only are there little things that can be done, but there are big things like moving us away from a reliance on fossil fuels and things like that. Yes. Can you talk about that? You know, that's not a message that, um, that I do any advocating for. That probably would come from the governor's energy advisor's office. And there are a lot of things going on. You might not hear about them because they're not really sexy type of issues. Um, it's, it's a lot of policy work and a lot of building a foundation of knowledge among the different participants. So unfortunately, I can't give you a, a specific answer about that. But we can look around and see what we can find that may be coming from my agency that I'm just not aware of or other state agencies. I, Sure. Um, Sharice or Michelle could probably address that a little bit more specifically than I can because they do work um, more with the schools. But we have very limited budgets, and so unfortunately, we don't have an educator that goes out to schools. We do occasionally present to schools. We do have curriculum that's available on our website and other tools to help to help people that do have time or that do have funding to go out into the schools. But um, we recognize that that's a significant opportunity, but we're not doing anything directly about it right now. I think we ought to hold the rest of the questions for the panel. Yeah, I think it's important. Can you please say how to connect with your office? She said, oh, sure. contact me and we yes. can, how do we do that? I have business cards that I can give you, um, or if you, when we're done with this, I can just put the website up or show you some specific information pages if you're interested. So. We also need, uh, we also know how to get in touch.